space will be everywhere. You cannot live without space in 20 years from today. One euro invested in space programs brings about five euro back to the economy. Welcome to The Big Question, the series from Euronews where we explore every corner of the world of business. Today, I'm joined by the Director General of the European Space Agency, Josef Aschbacher. Thank you very much for joining me today. So in recent years, the image of space travel has gained a reputation as a bit of a billionaire's boys club. Do you think the private space industry plays an important role in the space industry globally? Private industry will play a major role, but uh, it is also clear that private industry will not uh, succeed without public investments. Okay. Take the example of SpaceX. SpaceX being the largest space company today in the world, but they have been built up thanks to a very strong support of NASA. Mm -hmm both in terms of funding, uh, NASA has provided huge amounts of funding to build up and develop uh, projects, but also expertise. So yes, uh, we need private investment, we need to attract uh, venture capital funding, we need to attract funding from outside the public domain, absolutely, and uh, I'm working very hard on this also in Europe, but uh, it has to go hand in hand with European programs that give the objective that what we want to do, we want to go to the space station, we want to go to the moon, we want to go to Mars, and then we engage private industry and buy a service from them. But we have to really make sure that we have the long-term vision, the long-term programs, and the funding to enable it. Yeah, absolutely. Why is ESA's work important work that needs to be publicly funded? Oh, it's extremely important. Uh, sometimes I make uh, comparison, I say, uh, look, if I would have asked you 20 years ago, uh, do you need the internet? You would have said, yes, sir. Um, sounds very exciting, sounds very fancy, it may be good for something, but 20 years ago, um, nobody would have ever imagined the dimension of uh, what the internet brings today for daily life, for everything. And I think space is a bit in a similar situation. Today, of course, space is already utilized in many disciplines, but uh, in 20 years from today, I can assure you that space will be everywhere. It will connect people, it will observe our planet, and many other things will be assisted with space technology. In other words, you cannot live without space in 20 years from today. Already today, you cannot live without space, but in 20 years, even more. And this has economic aspects, uh, societal aspects, uh, geopolitical aspects, uh, also security aspects. Last but not least, also inspiration uh, of people, because if you have cool space programs, the young people uh, tend to work there and not leave the country or leave the continent. I saw at the age of seven years the moon landing, and this changed my mindset. It convinced me that this is something I want to work when I'm growing up, and I'm still fascinated every single day. So yes, space is very important uh, for the European Space Agency, but actually for every citizen in Europe uh, and worldwide. these brilliant programs and research and stuff that you do here at ESA, it's not cheap. But how much does it actually cost? It is very cheap. The ESA budget is about 8 billion mm -hmm. per year. So if you compare this figure and put it in context with what is spent in the US, NASA has a budget of about 25 billion per year. We have in ESA one third of the NASA budget. But having said that, we do have a huge output for what we do. Last year, we had a record a number of 13 satellites that we have launched. Wow. We had the inaugural flight of Ariane 6. Mm -hmm. We had the return to flight of Vega C. And all of this has been successful. We have two flagship programs today that are mm -hmm. Copernicus and Galileo. They are the best programs in the world. Uh, Galileo delivers the most accurate signal for navigation worldwide. It's more accurate than GPS, despite the fact that Galileo was developed 20 years after GPS was already on the market. And the very same happens in Copernicus. We have the most comprehensive observation of our planet and we deliver 350 terabytes of data to the globe of what happens on our planet. Again, it's the best Earth observation program in the world. So I think this is something that shows that we do with a relatively modest amount of money, a lot of deliverables in terms of space infrastructure. And I think this is something where Europe can be very proud of because uh, this is money very well invested. Yeah, and for that investment from the, the member states in Europe, how does ESA contribute to the European economy? Uh, we've asked uh, um, some consultancy companies to assess how much one euro invested in space is mm -hmm. bringing back to the economy. Mm -hmm. Depends a little bit on the domain in Earth observation or in weather forecasting, the economic impact is higher as compared to technology development. Okay. But uh, across the board, one euro invested in space infrastructure or space programs brings about five euro back to the economy. Oh, wow. More okay. recently, I've seen one example of the Arctic weather satellite, which mm -hmm. we have just launched last year. One 
you're invested in this Arctic weather satellite uh, constellation. It's uh, at the moment with one satellite, but there's a future constellation that can be built up, can bring economic values 50 times higher than the investment. Brilliant. All the work that actually happens in space, so the programs and the missions and the satellites and things, how do they benefit us and our economy? Vigil is a very interesting mission because it's monitoring space weather. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, the solar flares that come from the sun. So if there's a strong solar storm or solar flare, it can impact our infrastructure on planet Earth. That mm -hmm. means the electric systems, uh, even in space, uh, mm -hmm. the electronics can be damaged. So we need to know when such a solar flare is uh, about to erupt and there's a certain intensity that it could harm our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So Vigil is actually one of two satellites. One is built by ESA, the Vigil, mm -hmm. another one by NASA. Mm -hmm. And with these two satellites, you can really determine much earlier when a strong solar eruption would come and therefore have an impact on uh, infrastructure either in space of satellites mm -hmm. or the uh, space station or on Earth uh, for the electric grid, uh, which is one of the elements that is uh, at risk. How expensive is something like this? And then what would be the projective savings from us gaining that full warning? Yeah. The cost of such a satellite is in the order of a few hundred uh, millions, which is certainly an investment to be made. But mm -hmm. uh, if, if you can imagine of how much you can save by protecting infrastructure on the ground and therefore minimizing damage that can happen through a solar eruption, then there's a multiple factor in between. Let me just take one example. Mm -hmm. Because we do not yet have Vigil in orbit and therefore we do not yet have this information, uh, recently there was a solar storm that was unexpected, which uh, resulted in the damage of tens of satellites that have just been launched and the solar wind literally pushed it uh, from orbit into the atmosphere and therefore they deorbited because they could not uh, be rescued. Uh, this, this was unexpected and yeah. unprepared. And of course you can imagine several tens of satellites cost much more money than one satellite uh, necessary in order to monitor uh, such a solar storm and therefore be well prepared. And um, finally, on a personal level, what are you most excited about in ESA's future? ESA is an incredibly powerful organization in terms of delivering. ESA is very efficient in terms of use of taxpayers' money mm -hmm. and the impact it creates for the economy and for people's daily life. Uh, that is connecting people, that is uh, driving people in the sense of giving them the navigation signals and so on. So there I really see ESA and space in Europe to become an essential part of the future economy and the future society and maybe in many cases not visible because it's, uh, you know, satellites are up there and you do not know that your navigation signal needs satellites, but uh, you use them and you rely on them. But it really will enable the functioning of our society and make Europe powerful, richer and certainly more successful. Okay, brilliant. Well, um, thank you so much for sharing this exciting work with me today and for joining me on The Big Question. Thank you.